Ta -da, ta -da. All right. The title of the word today is I Choose Purpose. Amen. I Choose Purpose. I'm going to read out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. That's Hebrews 11, 25 and 26. Just a little bit about Moses and how Moses decided he would rather uh, go through suffering for a, for a duration of time looking for the long-term blessing of the obedience with Jesus Christ for his life. So it says in 25 and 26 out of Hebrews 11, He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. There's got to be some amens in the house today. Amen. Amen. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Sin is only pleasurable for a short time. A short duration. Temporary satisfaction. Very temporary. But God is looking for a long-term duration of blessing in our lives. And the blessing doesn't seem to show up sometimes for a long time. And so a lot of people take the quick fix thing. They indulge in sin. They indulge in sin. They get pleasure out of sin. But God challenges us that it's only a short term that you're going to feel good about it. Because long term, you're going to get nailed. Right. You're going to get nailed. And God wants you, you might feel like you are landing in a soft pillow of cotton when you jump into sin. But later you find out it is a pile of dog poo. <laughs> it is a pile of mess. It looked like it was going to be good. In fact, it felt good for a while. Yes. That's why a lot of people jump into sin. And they go, hey, God hasn't smote me. I'm not wiped out. And I actually kind of like some of this sin. It's kind of enjoyable. But God challenges us. This is only short term. It's not long term blessing. I don't want you to indulge in this and Moses realized the importance I'd rather suffer with the people of God than, than get all the blessings of Egypt for that season. Because long term, I'm looking at something bigger down the road. So where are you at today? Because God's kind of challenging us sometimes. We kind of like, we hold on to sin a little bit too long. We, we just kind of indulge in it and we kind of like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it, but I can, it kind of feels good. And you get into patterns of things in your life and you go like, you know, it's hard to let it go and everything. So I'm just going to hold on to it a little bit longer. And I know one of these days down the road, somewhere over the rainbow, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> But then we, we're still holding on to some things. And God is wanting us to let some things go that is not honoring to God in your life and my life. So if you jump into the short season of sin, you'll find out that it's not long-term blessing. And it will come back and bite fleeting enjoyment some uh, Bible versions would say different things and it's fleeting enjoyment it's temporary pleasures it's short term pleasures it's transitory enjoyment 
It's, it's transial. It's come and go. All of a sudden, this wasn't as fun as uh, it used to be. I'm stuck. I, I, I have my marriage falling apart. I, I have uh, relationships are not working. My finances are, are not the where, where they should be. And all of a sudden, we're catching ourselves in things that, you know, if we would have jumped on th it earlier and, and give it to God and let God get rid of it, we would have been able to start building something that's going to have fruit that's going to remain. Yeah. And God is wanting fruit to remain in our life. Good things that God is wanting to do in us. Your opportunistic soft life in sin is going to mess with the self-control, the lack of self-control that you have. And it's going to get you and it's not good. So God is wanting you to harness holiness. Harness holiness in your life. Pull it back in. Pull back in honoring God. Pull back in being holy because God is holy. It's setting our life on solid ground. God is calling us to those things. I, can, I choose the inconvenience of purpose. Amen. I choose the inconvenience of purpose, long-term purpose. Right. I choose that Amen. over the short-term enjoyment of sin. That's and so God's challenging you today on those things. I... Uh, have a had a grandpa that that was a, a had a big farm and uh, he tried to teach me how to ride a horse and so uh, he had a lot of horses and cattle and everything and so he's getting me up on the, on this horse and so I I get on top there I, I, and I, I'm not an expert on all the things that, that you do with the horse and everything, but you got the harness and, and you got the bridle and, and you got the bit in the mouth of the horse. And, and even James will talk about what happens that, that you can even turn a whole big powerful horse by pulling, pulling on the harness and getting the the bit to, to kind of pull on it and, and it will pull the horse in his will toward where you want to go. Yeah. And sometimes it's not easy when it comes to some things that we've held on to. And so we got to we got to grab onto the word of God, grab onto the word of God and we got to pull back, pull the harness and, and pull back and the, turn the will of yourself toward God. That's good. Come on now. Yes. Pull it back. Oh, I don't want to. I kind of like this sin. I've done it for a lot of years when nobody else knew about it. But I know God's word says that I need to obey him. Do you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Sometimes we can have a tough will. Yeah. A strong will on things. Yes, yes. But God wants to partner with you. Amen. Partner with you. That you have His Word and His presence and His anointing Come on. over your life. And it's pulling things back to where you are stepping forward the way that you're called of God. Because He wants long-term blessing in you. Amen. Long-term blessing in me. Sin's fun for a season, but then it's going to get shouted from the rooftops. It's going to be shouted right. from the rooftops. So pull back his blessing back. It says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, Amen. Yeah. but the, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want death poured into you. Amen. He wants life. 
James 1.15, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. That's right. Gives birth to death. Doesn't God doesn't want sin to mature inside of you where all of a sudden it's producing long-term death inside of you. God is wanting you to ax it at the root. Ax it at the root. Chop it off Amen. in Jesus' name. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know where to go from here. I, 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 I got a lot of stuff in my life. Start with being obedient, obedient today. Yeah. Being obedient today. And watch God start producing good fruit in our life. Today. Today. I, I can't change yesterday. But I can go today. Right. And I can say today is the day of my salvation. Amen. Now is the time of my favor in God. Amen. Now is the time. Turn it toward God's presence. Just because it looks like you're getting away with compromise, it will come back at you. It will come back at you. Luke 12, 3 says, What you said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you've whispered in the ear, in the inner rooms, will be proclaimed from the roofs. Wow. Powerful word. Man, I didn't really come to church today to hear this kind of message. <laughs> I thought you were going to say rah, rah, rah. You know, I am. Rah, rah, rah. Obey God. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. So that's what God is calling us to. It's important to allow God to break the cycle of self. Yeah. <laughs> Break the cycle of self. Because self is what gets in the way more than anything else. Let God break the cycle of self. Start bearing fruit. Walk with Jesus long term in obedience. Abiding joy. Long term favor. Favor that lasts. Not a quick fix. Not a quick a quick enjoyment on something short term. God's looking for abiding, lasting, long term joy inside of you. Amen. And He wants to get that because He's looking at the big picture. God's looking at the big picture. How can I bless you? How, how can I pour forth into you? How can I get the blessings in your life that I have? And God has abundance. And He wants to bring abundance inside of you. Inside of me. Hallelujah. Is there any amens in the house today? Amen. Come on now. We need to live full throttle Christianity. Amen. Full throttle Come on. Giving God permission. Yes. Have you given Him permission? Yes. Lord, have your will. Yes. Have your way right. inside of me. A hundred percent. I give it all to you. I, I surrender today. I surrender to you, God. Do what you need to do inside of this vessel that I am honoring you to the level that you've called me to. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Clean up your act or let God clean it up. Let God clean up your act. Let Him do a miracle. Don't export compromise into every situation of your life. Exporting the compromise to where you work and exporting compromise to, to your family. The church bringing compromise into the house of God. Come on, let's say you know I I challenge you. Say uh, compromise, get behind me. Yeah, get behind me. Now, this is not that you're perfect. This is not that you don't have any problems. This is a challenge that God's challenging you because He wants to take you deeper and farther. 
This is not to, to cut you down. This is not to blast you for where you're at. What it is is to come alongside of you. Come alongside of you. And God wants to gird you, strengthen you, empower you, so you can walk the victory through these things because He loves you so much. He loves me so much. Hallelujah. God says this is a message of life. That's right. That's right. Message of life. So I got four keys that will help work in purpose. Four keys that's going to help work in purpose. Number one, love God more than your lusts. Love God more than lusts. That's where we grab on to John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. Keep my commandments. We can say, I love God, but if we are not obeying Him, that doesn't show that we have that love. Am I speaking truth or not? His word says... If you love me, keep my commands. That's what he said. So let's embrace that today. Yeah. Let's realize that. God, I love you. That's why I'm not going to indulge with lust. Amen. Come on. Oh, I want to jump over here with the lust thing. But nope. I love you more. I love you more, God. So I'm, I'm over here. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you, God. No matter how much that pole is trying to yank at me, get behind me, right. Satan. Amen. Huh. I'm better than that. Amen. You're better than that. Yes, we are. And God knows how, how good you are with him here. And he wants you over here with him so love God more than lusts That's all right. it's good. amen just grab onto that number two love righteousness amen. love righteousness yeah, I want to speak to to things that you're hiding that, that, that you're holding on to to let them go I'm going to speak to those things let them go because we need to love righteousness. It says in 1 Timothy 6.11, But you, man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Yeah. Embrace that. Grab onto it. Grab onto these things. Oh, man, woman of God, flee the things that would bind you and hold you back. Amen. Flee those things and pursue righteousness and godliness and faith and love. Pursue those things for your life. Embrace those. See the sin that you are tempted to as worthless, ugly, and unbearably sinful. Yes, that's right. So instead of thinking about how, how great it's been, even though it's short term, no, it's ugly it, 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 it is destructive. That's right. it, it will wipe me out and my family yes. and those around me. It is absolutely unbearably obnoxious yes. and it's not welcome right. in my life. Amen. Come on now. I'm, I'm preaching today on something, something here that's, that's true. We just grab onto these things. Love what God loves and hate what what God hates. Get that in our spirit today. It says in Psalm 97.10, You who love the Lord hate evil. He perseveres the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Hallelujah. And number three, stay close to Jesus. Stay close to him. No one stole your freedom or peace. You gave it away. That's right. You gave it away. Yep. Stay close to Jesus. 
Remember that it's Christ who lives in you. It's Christ who lives in you. You're dead to sin. Right. Sin does not have dominion over you. It says in, in James 4.8, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Amen. So grab on to that. Remember that God's always close by. But there's things in our life that have put a wedge in between our intimacy with Jesus Christ. We've allowed a wedge to come in and we might not feel as close as we need to. But it's because that we've put the wedge because of what we have has allowed Amen. in our life. Yeah. And God says, I want you to stay close to Jesus. Just stay close to Him. Amen. There's power in staying close to God. There's power being close to Him. Just being close to God, He'll rub off His anointing, His power, into you and me. And relationship we, is our power. Come on, that's right. Relationship is power. Preach it there, bro. That's right. So, I don't want to wedge in between the intimacy that I have with God. Because he He's called me not just to be in the outer courts. That's right. Come on. That's but he's good. called me to go into the most holy place. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's good. Past the outer courts into his holy place. Yeah. There's a song. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> but oh, oh, but hey, it's so important that we grab onto that closeness with God, that heart to heart connection. Yeah. Because Nothing is going to block me. I'm not going to let in, nothing block me from my closeness with God. He's my ultimate. He's the one I serve. He's the one that's been there. He's the one that's been a friend that's stuck closer than a brother. He's the one that's been there when no one else has been there. That's right. When I've cried in the night, when I've been upset and lonely depressed and discouraged he's the one that's always been there and he's always always will be there for you he says i will never leave you and i'll never forsake you that's how good god is so stay close to him people don't allow the stuff over here don't allow that to pull you into you're better than that you're better than that stay close to jesus just stay close to Him. Watch Him work mightily in our life. And the last one is follow Jesus' example. Follow Jesus' example. Walk like Jesus walks. He challenges in His Word. A couple of places I want to turn to. One is 1 John chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. First John chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. And this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. So he's called us to walk like him. And then 1 Peter 2.21 First Peter two twenty one. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So God challenges you to follow Jesus' example. Love God more than lust. Love righteousness. Stay close to Jesus. And then follow his example. Walk as he walked. Walk as he walked. Keep in step with the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. Don't get out of sync. Don't get out of sync. Stay in step with the Spirit of God. Would you stand today as we close? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. It's important that we allow God to break a cycle in us that needs to be broken. If there's some things that you feel like there's just a cycle, it's just kind of there. God, God is a cycle-breaking God. He breaks cycles. There isn't any sin too big or nothing too strong. It comes down to your willingness. Are you willing do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? God would ask today. Do you want to be healthy spiritually? Do you want to go to the levels God's called you to go? Then sin is not for us to embrace. Amen. This pleasures of sin for a season it's a very short term where there's a little bit of enjoyment, but it's not long term. And God is calling long term anointing on sight of you. I pray in Jesus' name for everyone in this house today. I pray, Lord God, that you would pour forth your anointing, long term blessing. Thank you, God, for that kind of anointing in our life. And God, we're too good for this old stuff, this nonsense. You have purchased us by your blood. You have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. There is marvelous light for you and me from God. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you would touch us afresh by your presence. If there's anything that you've been feeling, yeah, God's kind of spotlighted a couple things. Would you just give it to Jesus even right now? Would you say, Lord, I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. A lot of times I've given things to you and I've taken it back. I've given it to you and I've taken it back. I've given it to you and I've taken it back. Keep giving it to God. Amen. Just do it again. Do it again. You're going to wear out. You're going to wear the whole thing out. And, and God is going to go, just keep at it because you're going to win. Amen. The only one that doesn't win is the one that quits and gives up. Everybody else that keeps on battling, keeps on fighting the good fight, we'll win. And I thank you for that, God. Ask your blessing and your anointing over your people. Thank you, God, for a great word today. Just reminding us that sin's only fun for a season and it will kick our butt. And I don't want that. And God doesn't want that. I just thank you, God, for who you are on our behalf and your love for each one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You know, you guys said that uh, pastor appreciation to me, and then I hit you with a word about sin. <laughs> thank you for still loving me. <laughs> thank you for still loving me. Because, you know, his truth, this is the full counsel. Amen. The full counsel of the word of God. And God wants you healthy. And how you get healthy is you take all of it. You don't right. pick and choose what you want to obey. You just obey all of it. You obey the whole word. And, he's after it. and blessing comes back in your life. God bless you all. We'll see you in church. All right.